everyone, I'm Dee Collins with Standout Stars. Welcome to the Weakness of Kindness and Gratitude Gift Giveaway and Summit, June 19th through the 25th. We are super excited that you tuned in today. And I am even more excited because I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, the woman that I'm going to be interviewing, her name is Brenda Pierce of No Regrets Academy. And Brenda is known as the empowered nurse. After 38 years of active frontline nursing, she has seen a lot of life come into and leave the world. Uh, she became an astute student of life and has transformed her knowledge into the No Regrets Academy. Um, she's an author, a speaker, TV show producer, and host. And Brenda shares insights into helping people transcend and transition into their best life moving forward. Brenda, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the call. Thank you so much, Dee. It's a pleasure to be here with you and everybody who's watching this week of gratitude and week of kindness. I mean, this is phenomenal. Yes, I'm super excited. We have so many speakers and it's just um, unbelievable um, the, the amount of response that we're getting and the lives that are being changed. And I know that um, before we really get into the interview here that I know that you're gonna be sharing on kindness is your birthright. And that is such a powerful statement and such a powerful topic. But before we get move forward into the interview, can you just you know introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and then we're gonna share a whole lot more with the listening audience. Oh, thank you for this opportunity. So yeah, I'm Brenda Pierce. I'm um, a 38 year veteran frontline RN from Ontario, Canada. And um, uh, it was about 20 years ago that I, I found energy medicine. I first started to break away from pills, prescriptions and physicians pads, right? And um, started to look into integrative approaches to wellness, which to me was totally foreign at the time. And I, I started with learning Reiki and energy medicine and, um, you know, feeling the energy uh, fields of the body. And I started to study the science behind that. And I started to look at what else can we do with our hands? And, and um, we know that touch is so powerful. You know, a kind touch really can change the outcomes for a person in terms of their pain, their fear, their anxiety. And then when you let the energy flow of the universe flow through you energetically, you can impact that even more with um, science and knowledge and understanding that we are energetic beings and that our cells, our 70 trillion cells in our body perform over 2000 functions every second. Like that's mind blowing, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and so I went from there into becoming a Reiki master studying more energy um energy medicine so to speak and um looking at uh what else can health and well-being be but nothing more than just kindness to each other and um so i've gone on to publish uh be uh, featured in several books um i am a tv show host and producer here in ontario canada of, of a show in our region that really tries to shine the light on the fact that there's more to this than what meets the eye. So that's me in a nutshell. Yes. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing that. You say in a nutshell, um, that was quite a nutshell. <laughs> so um, I, I think it's really powerful the things that you said, like you shared with us some information that um, you were talking about is mind blowing. Also, the, the um, points that you spoke on about energy, energy is all around us. And it's so amazing to be able to come into the knowledge and be enlightened on how to harness that, you know, for our good. What I would love for you to tell us about is the impact of self-kindness, because you mentioned self-kindness. So what is the impact of self-kindness to freeing you from the pain of loss? Yes, yes. So I am a parent of loss. I um, first time around, I had twins and my one son was born very healthy, breech, screaming and happy. And, and my second son, um, unbeknownst to us during the pregnancy, was born very, very sickly. He, um, we, he had sustained a very serious 
um, developmental injury at a time when my husband had a serious accident in the early days of uh, development in the first three weeks. Um, so so much of the body is developed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was a year and a day from the day that my husband had his accident to the twins being born and our son that was so sickly having surgery and dying after surgery. So a year and one day that can transform your life. Like, I mean, one day can change everything. But when you live through a whole year and a day of traumatizing events and hope and praying and, and really living on the edge of, you know, really defining, you know, the meaning of life and the meaning of relationships and the meaning of just interpersonal development in terms of our reliance went from being very self-reliant as a little nuclear family to needing the kindness of a community to help us through that time. And, and so If it wasn't for kindness being, you know, dispelled upon us or distilled upon us during that difficult time, like we were dairy farming. So you can imagine, you know, um, my husband really had to, um, you know, he was sustaining a life, life altering injury, which he survived, thank goodness, Mm -hmm. um, with his own little traumas, that PTSD from that experience. Mm -hmm. But then the pregnancy and everything that goes along with that uh, it was at one point very pregnant with the twins and he has a halo jacket on and uh, we're, we're, you know, walking together hand in hand down the street, trying to, you know, do our things. And people were very kind to us during that time. So if it wasn't for kindness, I don't know where I would be today, you know, all these years later, because the kindness becomes something that you receive but then you become ultra aware of it and you're more willing to give. And so, you know, it, it long and short is you don't have to go through traumatizing events in your life in order to instill kindness into receiving it, which mm-hmm. is hard for us because we're so used to giving. And especially as a nurse, nurturance is giving and giving and giving and motherhood is giving and giving and giving, but receiving that, what a gift. Wow. Just as you say the word receiving, I can feel um, that that kindness coming into me. You know, sometimes you just have to hear that and that will empower you to be able to start receiving that kindness. So it it sounds like based upon what you said that um, kindness um, begats more kindness. It kind of like multiplies and, and just snowballs into abundance when you start practicing kindness. But something interesting that you said that I hadn't really thought about before is the importance of that self-kindness. We so, I mean, we can be kind to others, but we also have to learn, like you said, to be able to be kind to ourselves, treat ourselves well, and receive kindness from others as well. That's um, absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely true. So, um, and, there's sometimes, mm-hmm. Go oh, ahead. and sometimes that's an evolutionary thing right? Um, I've developed something, a theory and looking back hindsight over the last, you know, 40 years of nursing, but um, I'm now 60 and 60 years of life, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And there's something that comes with time. And what I've developed is my theory on on the three phases of life, which is really quite fascinating. Um, When we're young, and then while we're under the influence of our parents and our family home, we're standing under the understanding of everything and everyone, the education system, our spiritual beliefs, our family norms, our culture. And we're just like these sponge and we just absorb and absorb. And, and, um, and we take it as kindness, everything that's being given to us, right? But then we move on to, uh, we move out of our parents' homes and we move into the world and we're in the education world, we're in the relationship world. And we're giving and we're receiving and we're, our, our understanding becomes challenged. And we move into what I call the inner standing phase. And in this inner standing phase, we're trying to find our place in the world. And sometimes it fits and we, we do well and things don't fit and they fall away. And, you know, life happens. That's what we say. And then um, it sometimes it gets to feel like sandpaper gritting against us. Yes. Polishing us raw you know, 
and and we just don't know sometimes where we stand in the world and that inner standing is really uh, pivotal because when we've had enough of that inner standing that buffing we become polished like a diamond mm -hmm. and we start to be a shine and when we start to shine it's because we come to terms with ourselves, and we come to terms with understanding that we are not um, the past does not define us it does not confine us but it does refine us into this polished being and when you're ready to be polished from everything that has happened in life then you start to shine your knowledge out and you radiate and you receive because there's such a clarity about this and you start to feel like you're absorbing kindness and you're feeling kindness because what else is there is love mm -hmm. and you find that over time that the love you want to have given to you is equal to the love you have for yourself mm -hmm. and when you start to develop that self-love self-nurturance everything starts to settle down in life you're no longer buffeted on the waves of you know um, disillusionment or confusion or anything like that and so oh you your mute went on so i can't hear you brenda you went mute can you unmute yourself okay <laughs> so can you repeat what you just said we didn't hear it and we really oh. want to hear that yeah there was a phone okay so uh do you want me to go back to the beginning of that or um yes um and i, I would also like for you to incorporate something in because i had a question um which was uh, i wanted to reshare what you just spoke about but i would also like for you to tell us how can a person start to um develop self-love how can we begin that process Yes. Okay. So we'll start there. Um, yeah. So, you know, the thing is in life is when we've received all this kindness to us and we start to look at it and it starts to fit like a different kind of a coat around our shoulders. And sometimes this, this, we're able to wear this coat of kindness easily, but sometimes it doesn't fit. It's because I think, honestly, there's this theory that I've come up with over my 60 years of life, and especially being a nurse and being an astute student of life and touching thousands of lives through my career, is that I've developed this, this understanding, this standing theory. So when we're young and we're, we're growing up under our parents' homes and we're living in a, a family environment, we're standing under the weight and we're absorbing everything that's thrown at us from culture language spirituality and religion ethics um, education and all that stuff and we're like the sponge and we're going right and we develop our, our identity but then we move into this inner standing stage when we move away from our parental home and we move out into the world and what happens is we are trying to take everything that we were standing under and absorbing and now fit it into the world around us. And it kind of is like operating by default because you had all this stuff and you sorted through it as a child, but now you're trying to make it fit. And it's like this give and take back and forth relationships and friendships and marriage and, you know, um, coming to terms with government and spirituality and everything. And, and it, we get kind of buffeted and buffed like sandpaper through those inner standing years. Mm -hmm. What happens then is we feel like we're not in control because we're buffeted along the waves of all this, this, this conflict and, and resolution that we go through. Then when we've had enough, like if you know sandpaper, if you buff something with sandpaper long enough, it becomes smooth. It almost has like a glassy shininess to it or like a diamond under compressed pressure and what happens is is once we've had enough of that we know you just know when you've had enough and you're ready to move into what i call the overstanding phase and this is where 
you learn that you've had enough, you've come up with your own ideas of what life is all about, you feel comfortable in yourself, and you start to realize that the love that you want to receive in your life is equal to the love you have for yourself. And when you do that, everything changes. You're no longer looking externally for factors to, to feed into your self-identity. You've, you've found it. Mm-hmm. And for some of us, it's sooner in life. Some of us, it's later in life. Some of us never get it. But I do know that when you do, it's like everything all of a sudden just kind of flows out. You're, you're much more of an open vessel to mm-hmm. give and receive. And when you start to develop that self-love, you look at the world with much more kindness and compassion. And you just really appreciate the smaller things in life. Mm-hmm. And it's never too late. It's never too early. The timing when you find that for yourself is perfect. Oh, that is so beautiful. I can feel it right here. And um, this might be a little off the subject, but I think I should say this. Um, I believe that all of the love in your life and all of the kindness that you have experienced must be why you don't look anywhere near 60. You look so much younger than that. I mean, you're beautiful. There's nothing wrong with 60. Um, It's a beautiful age, but you look very beautiful. And I'm sure that the love and the kindness has something to do with that. (laughs) It keeps you younger. Um, I believe so, because you know what? Going to a scientific perspective on it is our cells are, um, they are, we're a dry cell battery. And if we start to infuse like Dr. Emoto, I don't know if you know anything about his work at all, but Dr. Emoto um, did studies on polluted water in Japan from a lake. And what he did was he took the, the water and he froze it and looked at it under a microscope and it looked ugh, right. Mm-hmm. And he started to infuse this with love and the cell structure changed into the most beautiful crystalline structure, even though it came from dirty, polluted water. Hmm. So when you think about us, we're 70% water, give or take, mm-hmm. and we're this dry cell battery. Mm-hmm. And if our environment can change by the amount of emotions and love that we receive and live in or decide that that is our reality, it changes your crystalline structure of your cells inside of you. Mm-hmm. And you start to radiate mm. with love and compassion and kindness. So, so not only can this change you, but once you really get it, it begins to change others who are around you or the people that you come into contact with. Um, yes. I want to um, talk a little bit more of, about your book. And I'd like you to tell us how your experiences not only with uh, the impact of self-kindness and the theory that you developed on the three stages of life, um, but how these things that you have come into the knowledge of and experienced have helped you to expand into writing The Secret Child after, I mean, life after loss. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. So this book, The Secret Child Life After Loss is available on Kindle. It's available um, on our own website. We'll talk about the website later. But it's the stories of 15 parents of loss. So when you, uh, it took me a while, you know, it was this evolutionary journey, but myself and my book partner, Dr. Sue Dank, who you'll all meet on on this series, um, we found out years ago just by happenstance we were both in a book project and we were meeting to go to nantucket for a retreat for this book and we were in the back of this vehicle and we got kibbutzing and back and forth and we found out amongst other things that we had this immediate spark and friendship but we were also parents of loss and mind you you know my son passed away it'll be 33 years this this fall Mm -hmm. and um, but you never get over grief you journey through it right and you believe that when you when you know that this is a journey and you start to be gentle with yourself you realize that our children never passed to hurt us that we are their living legacy Mm -hmm. we are their heartbeat 
we are their voice, we are their breath, but we are their legacy. And so what happens is, is when you realize that you, um, and there's science behind this, and I'll, I'll tell you why women really always really hold the grief bomb the hardest. I mean, not saying that dads don't, but women do, because when we are carrying our children, we always thought it was a one-way flow valve of nutrients to the child through the bloodstream, through the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. But actually, science has now proven that stem cells from that child come back. Mm -hmm. And that's why women have this protective barrier for their children. And women intrinsically know that if there's something wrong with one of their children, they will pick up the phone and call them mm -hmm. when they need it the most. Or women will um, intuitively know, just know that there's something wrong or their child needs them or whatever it is. Because of this implantation of stem cells back into women, it goes in their heart, their mind, all through their body. But when I came to terms with and with Dr. Sue, who's a clinical psychologist, and we were talking back and forth and exploring our grief and our children and all that sort of thing, we realized we had a mission. And our legacy was to put together this book. And what this book is all filled with is, like I said, the stories, the subject matter is difficult because nobody really wants to go there. Mm -hmm. But these parents that have shared their stories in here and their kids from, you know, from uh, miscarriages all the way up to people, uh, children in their 20s, and we can expand that beyond. But we all First of all, many of these parents had never even grieved their loss, never came to terms with it. And so writing it was healing for them. But when we gave them the lesson that they had to figure out what their legacy was for their child, some of them have come up with charities and foundations or just writing, a, you know, writing their story to help other parents, mm -hmm. um, but also looking for worthy causes, um, creating bursaries and foundations in their children's name for whatever reason actually uh, championing championing um, legal actions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, and even like job awareness, you know, the uh, 21 and unders have the greatest risk of occupational injuries and death, you know, so there's, there's a lot of lessons in here. There's beautiful poetry and stories and, and, and lessons learned and legacy. Yeah. And that's what this book is all about. And the contributors in themselves are so thankful. Mm -hmm. for the kindness that happened by allowing them to step forward to share their legacy. And that's what it's all about, is helping people to really expand upon the life lessons and not take it with them buried in their heart to their graves, but to actually be a legacy of help and happiness and well-being and comfort for other parents of loss. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that. And I remember um, the great Dr. Miles Monroe, he has passed on, but but while about two weeks before he passed away, he was on an interview and he made a statement that the greatest source of uh, wealth and, and books and music and paintings and all of these glorious things are in the graveyard because people don't share them while they're living, but they take them to the grave. So I um, applaud you for being an advocate and someone who encourages others to live their purpose, to share their story, and to realize that there is purpose in everything in your life and in the losses that you have experienced. There's purpose in that, that can yeah. continue to live on and do good, you know, to others. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. It's so true. And, um, and you know, um, these children are living through us. And so, you know, for any parents who are parents of loss and would like to contact us, um, you can do so. And, and we'll be sharing a link that you can contact us through. Um, and, and maybe join us in the pages of another book because we cannot hold our children anymore by the hand or hug them. 
but we can put this book between our hands and we can we can just bless them and love them with yes. kindness yes and um there is uh or restoration is possible healing is possible transformation is possible we want to make sure that you do um go and take a look at uh, Brenda's bio. There's a lot of interesting things you'll find on there. You'll be able to find out exactly how to get her book. Um, please tell us about your website and how people can contact you, even though they can go online and see that. We just want you to say it here on the talk while you're here with us so they can know how to connect with you. Thank you so much. So you can go to my own personal website, which is um, all about healing. And there's going to be more information about the No Regrets Academy and how I can help people to transcend. Um, you can go to www.brendapierce.com. So Brenda, B-R-E-N-D-A, Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E.com, all lowercase, one word. And if you want to learn more about the book, the book is linked up on my website. But uh, we also have a beautiful group collective collaborator page, gift page as well that I'd love to share. And that is www.thesecretchildbookseries.com, all lowercase one word, forward slash W-O-K for the week of kindness. And so you can learn about all the contributors and take advantage of, of what they have to offer. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much. I'm so grateful and thankful for that. And this is, of course, the week of kindness and gratitude, gift giveaway and summit. Uh, we have been so honored to have you. But before we go, can you just tell us just a little bit more about that gift? Because it's a free gift. Um, you will be able to get the links here online um, under this talk or around it or, you know, in her bio or in the um, area about her particular talk. And um, can you just tell us a little bit more so that people can really make sure that they go get this? Because this is something that we don't want them to miss. They have to get this. Thank you so much. Yes, um, on the gift page, there is the book and it's linked up for you to go ahead and uh, purchase it if you'd like to do that and support our cause, our mission. Proceeds, portion of proceeds from my part of the sales is going to help Children's Hospital of Western Ontario. And uh, that's where my son lived and died. And the incredible staff in the PCCU were just incredible. Um, and on the gift page though, you're gonna see little pictures of each of the contributors and there'll be audios and uh, free downloads and all kinds of wonderful things to help lighten and brighten and help infuse them into your life, more kindness and self-love. Oh, that, that's wonderful. I also want to say this um, to help inspire anyone who might be watching who not only may have gone through something similar or some type of loss, might even be experiencing that right now. Was there ever a time when you were going through that where you felt like you could not make it, and um, but you overcame that? And they are here today. So I just want you to speak to those people to let them know that even if they're experiencing it right now, or they feel like they can't go on, or that they're always going to have um, that inhibiting factor that, you know, it is possible to move past that and, and to transform their lives. Well, we know Dr. Kubler-Ross has come up with the four phases of grief and, um, and that usually grief subsides in a year. It never, you never do. Um, I think the thing is though, to stop and take a breath. Mm -hmm. If you have this overwhelming, just deepest grief, take a breath. Just know that the next breath and the next breath and the next breath are going to not, not only, um, it'll soften the blow. It'll, it will soften the blow. But in my circumstance, I had a twin. I had a surviving twin. I didn't have the chance to stop and wallow or um, maybe grieve as deeply as I would have if, if I had just, you know, didn't have an other child. So my other child and many parents will, may have other children. Um, don't give up on life because of your loss. You take your loss with you in your heart. It's always there with you. Your child is always with you. And, but 
don't forget the beauty of life because you're breathing, your heart rate beats for your child, and they wouldn't want you to suffer and struggle. They didn't leave you to hurt you. And that's the big and the short of it is when you come to terms with that, then you look for a reason to live. For me, I had to go back to working full time two weeks after burying my son. It was the hardest, hardest thing to ever do, but I did it. And I kept going and going and going. And you just have to know and believe next breath, the next breath, the next breath will help you to live more fully and to come to terms with the fact that you are amazing and you are a gift and your child is, a, is counting on you to keep living for them. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. I know that you have definitely helped me. And I know that no matter what I'm facing, if I get to that point where I feel like I can't move forward, I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to hear your words in my mind saying that next breath, the next breath, the next breath. And before you know it, you have moved past it. Um, thank you, uh, Brenda Pierce, so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your kindness with us. Thank you for sharing your love, your experience experience, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your peace. Um, we just thank you for sharing that. And now that you will forever be a part of us because you have shared that. And we thank you uh, for being the living legacy of your son. So um, <laughs> you guys, make sure you tell somebody about this. You're going to want to make sure that if, uh, if you missed it or you know anybody that missed this talk, tell them to definitely watch the replay. We will have you know, opportunities for you to become a VIP, to have access to this content um, ex for an extended period of time. I'm sorry I'm talking a little weird because I have these invisible aligners in, so please forgive me. So I'm so glad that Brenda, you did most of the talking during this <laughs> session. We thank you for sharing this very powerful and insightful and inspirational talk with us. And I hope that you guys tune in for the remainder of the talks that are on the uh, week of kindness and gratitude gift giveaway and summit, June 19th through the 25th. This has been amazing. Thank you. I'm Dee Collins for Standout Stars, and we will see you on the next talk.